Hello everyone and uh, welcome back to this uh, second tutorial of uh, pulse measurement capabilities. I am uh, Navneet Kataria and I am the product manager for Enritso Vector Network Analyzers. In the last video or the first tutorial of this series of, of pulse measurements, uh, we introduced you to a lot of uh, uh, concepts related to pulse measurements and uh, that was an introductory video wherein we covered a lot of applications as to where and why pulse measurements are required and how VNAs are used basically to characterize various devices like radars on wafer measurements and various other applications. We also saw that what are the important parameters and what are the important uh, measurements that are required to be done like pulse profiling, point in pulse, pulse to pulse measurement and various other measurements as well. We also touched base on why pulse testing is required in various domain. Basically, it's a measurement which is more often used by radar uh, applications or people who are in the radar segment, especially the system integrators. And as well, it's used for on wafer applications wherein the DUTs cannot be tested for a longer duration of C C CW waves and that's why they need pulsing. The, the, the pulses, pulsing can be done on two grounds. One is the RF pulsing and the second could be DC slash IV pulsing as well. Uh, Andritsu has solutions for both and in the last presentation we also discuss on the various solutions that Andritsu provided on the pulse measurement. We also touched based upon based upon option 35 and 42 which are the two main options which makes Andritsu solution the best in the world. Option 35 as you know is basically the IF uh, digitizer that we have in place and that gives an unprecedented uh, IF uh, measurement bandwidth of 200 megahertz which gives us a resolution of 2.5 nanoseconds uh, in the pulse measurement. We also touched base upon option 42 which is basically the wizard by which a lot of measurements related to pulse which are not available anywhere in the world can be made very easily. Uh, with this measurement. Coming back to this video, today we will be doing a demonstration of Enritsu Pulse uh, and various options that we have. Basically, I have a unit which is MS4644B. Today I'm using a 40 GHz vector network analyzer. Plus, I also have uh, uh, a pulse demonstration module which we normally uh, let our guys who are there in the field use it for uh, applications and demonstration purpose. Uh, so, so that module is basically used to give the RF uh, uh, pulsing capabilities. So this is uh, how it looks. So you can see that this is a small box which has a power supply. Then there is an input which is coming from the pulse generator uh, from the VNA backside. Our VNA has four internal pulse generators. And then we have the, the RF in and out going to respective ports of the VNA. Coming back to this pulse demonstration uh, module, you can see this is the block diagram of this pulse demonstration module. And you can see it's basically uh, device which is trying to do a modulation or pulse modulation to the incoming uh, RF uh, from the VNA port. So you can see that the PGen uh, low is closed. That means whenever uh, we have to close the switch here to the RF side to make it pulse. So that means all the pulse modulation is happening in this box. We have to have the pulse gen pulse generator signal coming in to be on the lower side. You can also see that uh, there is a long transmission line which is shorted at the end. So there might be reflections coming out and these reflections will actually coincide with the outcoming uh, signal and they could uh, uh, combine constructively or destructively. That's why the pulse may have some uh, falling edges uh, discrepancies and that we will show you uh, as well. 
Apart from that, we do have the Pulse Demonstration Module Component Specification as well. We will be using a frequency of uh, CW frequency of 10 GHz and the uh, VNA frequencies to be operating from 5 to 15 GHz. And you can see that uh, there are some insertion losses uh, as far as this module is concerned this can work up to actually uh, 40 and 70 gigahertz so you can see that uh, you know there are some losses and the specifications are very clearly uh, stated here there is some rise time as well which is like less than 8 nanoseconds but let's let's get going uh, now onto the measurement capabilities